You want to check it out. I found the like and the in this guys. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, Thomas Love here from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia and today we are talking about the Pixie A2572 because many of you are curious about it and I received plenty of questions about this camera I will record an episode dedicated to a full review end of month so stay tuned because this is not the full review yet I'm only been using it for a few weeks so I can answer a few questions that I received and I want to share with you my first impressions shooting with it because one of the concepts that I'm very fond of explaining is that every time that you change camera, camera assistant or lens despite you are walking the same streets you walk every day despite you are the same photographer that you have always been so your style will not change anyway you are shooting differently because you will have to get along with a new camera, with a new lens, with a new modality of shooting and in this particular case we are discussing about a rangefinder camera so it's not a mirrorless anymore, it's not a DSLR you might be very accustomed to. This is a rangefinder camera so either you know how to use a rangefinder for manual focusing otherwise you can use the zone focusing. We discussed it already, if you missed the episode please find it up here. But today I want to talk a bit further about this camera because it really reminds me about the Leica M10D. You might be aware of that particular model, basically it was a Leica M10P with the same sensor but without the rear screen. Why they chose to do it? Because that was a real photographic experience as it is with the Pixies. So this would be like an analog camera in a digital body with some more features added to it but basically you are having here the same shooting experience you would have with an analog camera with a rangefinder camera and also the pixie is the only digital camera adopting the leica m mount glasses so big plus to it too the sensor is the top rated APS-C 26 megapixel sensor that was available already in the second generation on the pixie and in addition to that, it is now using a 64-bit processor, but we will see what it means in terms of end results. So stay tuned and bear with me because we're going to discuss about this camera and the shooting experience and the end results that you're getting out of it. Why am I saying that this is a Leica M10D in this guys? Because basically it's the same camera that the Leica M10D was. It has a similar resolution. This is 26 megapixel, the other one was 24. In addition to that, this is a BSI sensor that will eventually help you in low light situation. And in addition to that, this is also capable of shooting raw files monochrome. Why is it so important to shoot raw files monochrome? Because monochrome is eventually helping you having even better performance, even more details in low light situations so we are all fond of Leica monochrome digital cameras such the M10M which I would love to purchase one day but this is the French version of the Leica M10D either color or monochrome so what is not to like what it is so special about this camera this camera has a very nice form factor it is small and lightweight it is always with me so this is the very first plus i'm not comparing it to my Leica q2 which i'm using right now to record this episode because they are two very different cameras one is a rangefinder the other one is mirrorless one has a bit more technology advancement it has an uh, optical image stabilization autofocusing mechanism point and shoot while this is a rangefinder so it is fully manual and it is also why we love it so much and why people love their Leica cameras so much so if you are following the channel for a while you know that I stand for image quality this is my top priority when I'm taking pictures when I'm out there and I want to take photographs my first priority is image quality and this is also the reason why in this channel I'm discussing 99% of the times about great image quality cameras which are Leica cameras and Hasselblads and I added recently the Pixie camera to my very favorites because I'm using it 
with the Leica M mount glass. This is a Voidlander 35mm and using it gives me pleasure. So it's a tactile pleasure, same thing that you would have when you take your Leica in your hands because the materials used and the assembly, it's a tactile pleasure and also it gives you the rangefinder shooting experience. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please find the link above here because we discussed it already. But if you know your way around Leica glasses, cameras, and if you know your way around rangefinder, well, you will get it immediately why it is so nice to go out and shoot with a pixie camera. So as a matter of fact, this is a Leica M10D with some technology advancements implemented into it for a fraction of the price as simple as that so if you are about impressive burst rates if you are fond of af tracking mechanism if you want to follow your subject if you are a sport photographer of course this is not the camera for you but if you are after an analog looking experience and leica glasses then i'm sure you will have to consider this little one here so what is so special about it let's see together a few files because despite this is able to give you raw files both color and monochrome and i do appreciate its color science i most of the time use it as a monochrome this is my bias because i have already a color camera which is my leica q2 and therefore i'm much more curious about the monochrome shooting experience we discussed it already how it changes and the switch you will have to have in your mind if you want to have a full monochrome experience and go out and start reasoning in luminance so contrasty situations black and white hard light and shadows rather than saturation tonality and the rgb curves that you can eventually retouch in post-production when you're shooting color so with this camera another big plus is that when you are out there the moment you get inspiration to shoot color you switch and shoot color and the moment you get an inspiration to shoot monochrome you switch and you shoot monochrome so you don't have to have two camera bodies with you at the same time if you are an analog shooter similarly you cannot switch because you will only have to change film nonetheless you will have to do it when you're done using your 24 or 36 shots so it's not so immediate so this camera it is not only the only digital camera apart from leica's using leica and mount glasses and it is not only the only digital camera so far using a 64-bit processor it is also the only digital camera that can let you shoot either monochrome or color raw files so follow your inspiration and the moment you want to switch you do it on the go but let's see together a few examples of pictures that i've taken with this camera because since it is lightweight and compact i always have it hanging at my neck now you might be a different photographer if you are a studio photographer if you are a wedding photographer you might have different needs the main need for me apart from image quality is to always have my camera with me because you never know when you face an interesting situation when you are witnessing something special in your life walking down there in the street every time you see something and you don't have your camera with you it's a missed shot it's a missed opportunity you are witnessing something but you're not able to record it in any way while if you have your camera with you and this is also why i'm so very fond of leica cameras it is because you can have it always with you so not being like this is also in disguise because thieves over there wouldn't know what they are stealing of course you don't have the big red dot catching attention to you i have been asked a few times and guys think it is a fuji camera so i don't know if it's a compliment to fuji or to pixie but still both fuji x pro line and this one have an impressive assembly quality so I think it's also a nice object to get in your hand but let's discuss it thoroughly and see all of its aspects one by one a couple of flaws that we have to consider when we're discussing this pixie well the first one is that this rangefinder window is so very close that if you're going for bigger lenses like Nautilus lenses 
you cannot use them otherwise the rangefinder second small window will be obscured uh, the company is aware of it i don't know if they will revise the design for future cameras but so so far so good if you're using a small glass like this one you won't have any problem and the second flow that i see when i'm out there and i want to shoot street photography and i'm most of the time is using zone focusing is that you cannot have automatic ISO management so you still have to go into the menu and pick up your ISO and this slows you down a bit but the company is aware of it they said they will eventually implement automatic ISO management in the next software release another big plus this camera has is that it will never face hardware obsolescence and this is one of the many aspects that make Pixie a unique object because you won't have to resell it in say couple of years if you want to have the latest advancement in technology in order to purchase the new model you just send it in and they will upgrade the hardware for you not just the software they will upgrade the hardware for you so any future pixie release whatever they are bringing to the table you will have it implemented in your current camera for just a few hundred bucks so you won't have to resell this camera in order to purchase the new one you will just have to send it in and they will upgrade it for you and send it back to you so this is very impressive fight against hardware obsolescence is one of the main topic out there and this is the only company doing it then the 64-bit processor honestly i don't know what it's bringing apart from managing the raw monochrome files and so i'm very fond of it because it means that i'm having raw monochrome files to deal with but apart from that it's a bit uh, battery consuming fortunately batteries are small and, and they're not expensive so you can have a bunch with you i have a couple of batteries with me all the time so i would be using this main one and then when needed you switch to it but I never run out of juice when I was out there shooting. I always keep a second one in my pocket. This is so small too that you can have a bunch and they are not expensive at all. Or if you want to recharge when you take out the second from the camera, you can just plug it in with a USB recharger and do it. Or eventually, if you are willing to do, but I'm not willing to, you can recharge via USB-C. So if you're having like a coffee break or whatever, you just plug it in very quickly and you get more juice another very important aspect of this camera is that it has an integrated memory so forget about losing sd cards adapters whatsoever you just plug it in you have 64 gigs in this very model to record your raw files which is like 3500 shots if i'm not wrong but anyway it's more than enough because the 26 megapixel sensor doesn't stack up your memory very easily it has a buffer so you can go and keep shooting it has no problem at all with overheating so you're just out there enjoying your photography and then a different thing has to be mentioned about the glasses that we're using because these are glasses thought for full frame cameras so the pixie camera is aware of being an APS-C, so you won't have to do any calculations the moment you pop in your glass you just select the same frame lines as mentioned on the glass so this is a 35 mil i went for 35 mil framing lines so that's a no-brainer and also since it's in a psc sensor on a full frame glass you won't have vignetting so guys these were only the preliminary thoughts about this camera please let me know if you have other questions or curiosity about it i will be more than glad to answer your questions Please let me know down here in the comment if you got any value out of this video. Please remember to like it, share it on your social media, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos to come. And I guess I will see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.